Podcast listeners, it is I, Golden J, and with me today for interesting people doing interesting things is my old friend Julie Morgan, aka Julie Johnson, <laughs> which is the name that I remember her by all those many years ago. What's it been like six, seven years ago when we graduated high school? Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, let's go with that. And that's that's uh. Julie, thank you for joining me on Golden Image Podcast and the uh, little side project I got going on with this. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Thank you for the invite. Yes. Uh, so tell us a little, just just give us a, a nice little uh, overview about you. Um, and what I mean by that is, is I, I, honestly, to be honest, I've been watching your Facebook and, and, and you know, your posts and stuff that you do um for a while now that's why that's why i did contact you because i find it extremely interesting where you're at and what you're doing well <laughs> um yeah so back in indiana when i lived there um you know i had eventful things of life and um decided that the time to move to Florida. Um, so I don't know how far back you want me to go, but basically just a, a little bit about me as I, I met my um, third husband. Okay. And, All right. um, we decided to move down here full time. So um, he had a vacation place down here at Fort Myers Beach. So we vacationed here for a little bit before determining that we wanted to move down here for a full time. Right. Um, love the area, you know, came here as a grand with my grandparents and everything else. So um, that it was not an, a hard decision at all to say <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, how can you say no to leaving Indiana? I mean, come on. <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, and it, it was in the midst of everything going on with um, Biomet and Zimmer. Right. So they actually um, announced that. And I already I knew that that was not going to be my forever career at right. that point with the merger. Um, so that made it a lot easier to say yes to the move. Um, and it was really at a time in my life where I was ready for the change. Um, there was, you know, I raised two boys and. Um, you know, I, my joke, my joke is that both of my kids are in law enforcement. One breaks it and one enforces it. So um, <laughs> I was, I was at a point in my life that I needed a drastic change. Um, one of my, my sons uh, is incarcerated for, for drugs. And I was getting very deep into uh, trying to save him. Right. Um, and then my other son decided that the Marine Corps was the place for him. Um, so saying goodbye to that. So my whole life kind of was in an uproar. Um, so Florida has been really the place for me right to on. become my own individual, I guess. 100%. I, th so, I, I see. And now I did not deep dive that. I did not know. I did not know that about your boys. I, yeah. uh, I did not know that. Um, um, it's it's so tough to to have that i mean that is a major change you got one that you you know where he's going with the other one as a marine you never know where he's going and and uh you know for long periods of time i'm sure do you get to hear from do you get to hear from both of them or do you talk to either one of them so my oldest son uh he is in indiana 
uh, that's where he's incarcerated at. So I do get uh, phone calls and um, video visits. Uh, when I do come back to Indiana, obviously I, I see him. Right. I still have my grandchildren. Um, I got two grandsons by him in Indiana. So um, I'm very close to them, uh, love them dearly. Um, and then my other son, Camden, the youngest one, he is actually residing in like uh, Northern Florida. So we just oh. moved him from Arizona to Florida. So I don't get to see him as much because he's a recruiter. Okay. And there's long hours. Oh, I can imagine. Yeah. There's, and probably lots of travel with that too, isn't there? Yeah, there is. <laughs> yes. And you know, it's, it was, a. uh, how do I say, I, I, I wasn't upset as far as being an empty nester that never bothered me. I think more it was, um, you know, after having a, a couple failed marriages and then um, having a troubled son um, and trying everything in my power to get him, you know, away from the drug scene. Um, then having my youngest son leave the, the nest, that one probably was the hardest. Um, but coming down here to Florida, uh, my world was torn upside down, literally, because that is when my oldest son, I guess it finally hit ahead. Um, and that's when the incarceration and all that kind of happened. And um, the, the good thing is um, he is better and he's been drug free for since 2017. Nice. And I know where he's at and I know he's alive and I'm not playing private investigator. So <laughs> my life really got to a calming place. Um, I actually went to the next degree of obviously what I did to help him didn't help him. And right. um, so I actually there was on the beach, there ended up being a drug rehabilitation that opened and i asked to volunteer and they ended up hiring me and i learned so much from the the people that were actually living that lifestyle and what i was expecting was out of reach right and that's when i learned to investigate more of what's going on with his brain and understanding why he chose that and then at the same time then my youngest son um got stationed in Japan. So he actually left the country. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, right? But the good thing with that is I got to marry him. I, uh, since I'm a notary down here in Florida, I can legally marry people and I got to marry him and my daughter-in-law before they went to Japan. That's awesome. So yeah. a notary or, or ordained, are, are you, are you considered an ordained minister or the notary then is that how that works? No. So if you're a notary in the state of Florida, I think there's like three states. So uh, being a notary, I can actually perform ceremonies. Nice. So um, down here, if you're an ordained minister, it still takes a notary to notarize all signatures. Gotcha. Where I gotcha. can do all of it. Right on. Yeah. I personally. So I'm actually, getting, I'm Go actually getting ready to marry somebody else uh, here probably in the next month or so. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I became an ordained minister to marry my niece uh, a few years ago and uh, down in Texas. And uh -huh. since then, I have married all three of my children. Oh, that isn't it awesome? It There's is, just it something is the, about it. It's the best. Yes. Well, good <laughs> because, for you. Because when you're with your family, they know who you are and how you are. Then it takes that it takes that edge off of uh, actually doing uh the ceremony and you kind of you get to enjoy it more i think instead of standing up there in front of a bunch of people you don't know and and doing it agree yeah which you know i've done that too but you know it's it, i like doing the kids a lot better than than the other ones but yeah I pretty agree. crazy. <laughs> it's pretty crazy so you make the move you flip your life upside down you leave indiana uh i'm i'm going to assume that that's probably like the first out of state move that you made did you live in indiana up until that point the whole time i did right on yep. so so you up in you move to another state and you get down there and how did you get into realty well the plan was is that i came down here to i guess retire without <laughs> having a retirement income but basically not work <laughs> 
that was the plan of just, you know, hanging out at the beach, being a sun bunny and all that. Um, after a year, I was bored. Um, really? Yeah. I forgot how to do simple things in Excel, which is not good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so my, my neighbor actually was into fire safety, which is down here. I don't remember how it is in Indiana, but down here, all the condos and apartments and hotels, they have to have yearly sprinkler and alarm system tests and fire pump. So it's just a requirement. So he just happened. He's like, I just need somebody temporary. Well, it ended up a year. And then I was like, okay, I I'm done. This is a full-time gig. I don't want to do it. Right. Um, took a couple months off, then got bored again and got hooked up with a re real estate business coach. And that was super fun. And I felt like I could sell real estate after working with her. <laughs> I learned all, everything how to do it. Right. So um, the team Latitude Group uh, was one of the groups that she coached. And I just reached out to them and said, hey, what do you think about me joining? And I actually joined to start taking care of their social media, um, kind of handling admin type stuff. Um, and it's evolved into more like queen of operations because now <laughs> I pretty much do, <laughs> do all of it. Um, and I, my two team leaders, they're, they are the dream team. I, I love working for them and with them. Um, and so now I do the social media, I do the graphic design, I assist with all the contracts to make sure everything's in compliance. And then I sell real estate on the side. So you do, I mean, uh, it, it actually sounds like a really important job if you're running, uh, uh, well, let me, let me, let me, hold on. Let me bring this up. This, the post, the, the post that you posted back, uh, a February 1st on, uh, on your Facebook page where you talk about being, uh, I am a realtor. And then you talk about being the queen of operations. And it was funny because I'm like, I'm going to ask her what that means. And then I like was uh, just doing some more research and I found this post. So you do graphic design and the marketing and the managing the social media, the review of contracts. Uh, so you are office, but you do get to go out and show houses and you do things like that then too, right? Yeah. So a lot of our agents, um, they work with leads. My leads are a little different because it's strictly just friends and family. Um, and a few referrals that friends and family do. So I, I keep my business small. Uh, I got into it mainly because I knew a lot of people from home that wanted places down here. And I just wanted to make sure that they were in the best care. Right. Um, and I thought I was the best person to probably do that. Well, yeah, you're going to so. take care. You're going to take care of family. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> As well, you should. Yeah. Yes. No, uh. So how long have you been working then with the Latitude Group and, and doing the Queen of Operations stuff? So that has been, so let's see. So probably about 2018, maybe 2018, July is when I started working with the Latitude Group team. And then at um, about nine months, it changed hands to the two guys that I work with now, the team leaders, they were on the team but they ended up purchasing the business and they've had it since 2020. Um, so they've had it for, you know, what, two or three years. So, so they bought in right in the middle of the pandemic. Yes. Or, yes. That's that a, was that's, the reason why our other team leader got out. Right on. How, how mm -hmm. was that in Florida with, with all of that? How does, how does that work out in real estate? Did it, did it boom? Did a lot of people want to just get out of what they were to get down into the sun and in the sand and, and kind of move on with life from there? Or was it, did it just kind of, everything kind of slow down and go to a slow crawl? Oh, it was a little bit of both. Like yeah. it started out booming and then it kind of, kind of just tamed down. Um, Cause it was harder to show houses. Nobody wanted to be, you know, in real person. Right. Um, so that was a challenge, um, doing a lot of virtual showings and then trying to be quick at it. Cause there was multiple offers and, you know, just, just, it was a weird, it was, it was a weird market. Um, but it did slow down a little bit. And then of course, then we had the 
the next boom. Right. You know, where things were just crazy, but Florida is such highly desired with, you know, the weather and the sun. Um, and, you know, for me, I can't be in a better place. You know, I, I really, I can't imagine being anywhere else now that I've been here. Right. Right. Well, from my understanding, and I have never actually been to Florida. I've been, I've been a lot of places, but Florida is not one of those States that I've ever actually been in. Um, a lot of people I talk to love Fort Myers in that area and say it is just amazing there. Um, yes. my, and that's, and, and once again, for some weird ass reason, I thought Fort Myers was on the ocean side, not the, but it's on the Gulf side of Florida. Right. For so, I don't know why I thought it was on the other side, but I, like I said, once again, doing my research and, uh, trying to make sure that I had enough content to talk to you about the uh i get to looking at it going man you're an idiot you're just stupid it's on the golf side you moron it's confusing <laughs> but yeah most people that i knew that have been there and uh, have stayed there for any period of time absolutely love it say it's gorgeous um i know that we have been to galveston texas along the coastline down to there and we love that area down in there too so i can I can imagine that that's beautiful down through there too. Yeah. All those. We have some, you know, and that's the great thing about this area too, is it's not all about the beaches. Um, we have some great beaches. Don't get me wrong. Right. Right. But, um, you know, downtown Fort Myers is the, the river district is, it reminds me of like the historical part of like Warsaw or the historical part of Leesburg. It's got the the brick streets and, you know, so I, it often reminds me of home sometimes, right. but much cooler because what, what did, what did um, Warsaw have like first Friday or something it was called? Well, yeah, they, they're still doing first Fridays, the first Friday of every month. But uh, I remember back in the day when we used to have pioneer days downtown where it was like the whole weekend of just shutting off downtown and, all the shops would come outside and I mean, it just gave it a whole new feel. And I, and I, that's what I love about those, those warmer climate areas. And um, you know, and we see it a lot. And when we go to uh, in, into Kansas city and go down to the plaza and, and it's just that feel and uh, you know, just being able to move around and, and not have you uh, not like you got to jump in a car and go from this place to that place. Everything is right there. And, and yeah, um, what was the other one? Uh, when we were in Cleveland a few years ago, I got that feel. We ended up walking from the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, we were going to go to Wahlburgers because there was a Wahlburgers right there, and we'd never been to that. We wanted to go try. We wanted to go get a Wahlburger, and we ended up walking. Never had it yet. You haven't had it yet. No. <laughs> There's got to be one down there close, right? There's got to be. I'm gonna have to look it up. Well, I had to go to Cleveland to get one. Cleveland, oh. yeah, that dumpster fire. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. We had an amazing time just walking downtown, uh, and in that same kind of that feel where you know they had the streets blocked off, and uh, you know people were jumping bar to bar and and just having a good time down there by. Well, it's not Indian Stadium. It was at that when I was there. It was still the Cleveland Indians, but the stadium's right there, and everybody was getting ready to go to a game and. So, yeah, I know what you're, I know that feel, I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, that just that, uh, kind of that, uh, uh, that place of belonging, you know, like you just, there's no way you can not have a good time. Yeah. And it, like, like you said, when you said it shut down the streets and stuff, and that's kind of what our little music, they call it a music walk but it's like bands on every corner you get to walk around with your beverage you know not get in trouble or arrested and <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's kind of cool so we've got some you know each little city kind of adds its own little vibe i mean cape right. coral is its whole little vibe and then you've got the beach you got fort myers punta gorda is reinventing itself um you know to, to, to bring in some younger generations so yeah, it's it's super cool. I mean, I I love each little area. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I've seen some great places, that's for sure. And uh, hopefully one of these days I'll get down there. Fort Myers is definitely on my bucket list of places to visit and just hang out and 
and do that is I maybe get older, closer to retirement. <laughs> now that I'm in the now that I'm in the 50 club, I can start looking towards that. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't as much fun as I thought it would be. I mean, the aches and pains just come out of nowhere. I don't I don't understand. I know. Going... And you don't even get a discount for it. <laughs> <laughs> wait you don't son of a bitch no well that's Gotta not wait 15 fair. more years <laughs> i don't like it i want it now <laughs> i know <laughs> well um so tell me you were in fort myers when the last big hurricane pretty much wiped out a big chunk of fort myers mm -hmm. can you take us through some of that did you guys stay so, so where I lived on Fort Myers beach back when, uh, hurricane Irma came through. Okay. So I was here for that one. Um, and that one was supposed to be the big storm, right? So, <laughs> they they uh, always yeah. say they're the big storm. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you get, it was my very, that was my very first hurricane to, to, boot and then my husband was at our new mexico ranch so he wasn't even home when this announcement comes through so i was left to fend myself with irma um and it was scary at first you know they were talking about the 12-foot surge and everything that ian brought was supposed to happen with irma and um so i went to cape coral but um you get to a you get to a point that you don't have any options so you just suck it up and you you deal with it right um right. a lot of my family was calling they're like julie you need to leave and i said where do you want me to go there is no gas available if i do get gas how am i going to fill up i'm not willing to be stranded on the roadside because that's what's going to happen because traffic's not moving right it's just better for me to stay at that point so um but i learned a lot through that hurricane um how to prepare for ian when it came because right. I, um, you know, I didn't know what Irma was going to do. So, I mean, I had my name strapped. I, I, you know, I wrote my name, my social security number, who I belong to, you know, to my husband, his information, and I strapped everything and taped it to my body. So if something was going to happen, you know, right. Somebody right. will find me. Right. Um, cause I really didn't, I really didn't know what to expect. So after I lift and got through it, I'm thinking, well, that was a breeze. <laughs> So when Ian came about, we actually had moved away from the beach um, and we lived in uh, in North Fort Myers, which is a little more inland, which I'm very thankful we did. Um, the sound, the sound is what is the most horrifying because you can't see out. Right. So all you hear is things hitting your house and hitting your roof. And then you hear wind coming through um, you know, your windows. And then all of a sudden things get quiet and you know, you're, you know, in the eye or next to the eye. Um, when I found out, um, once the storm passed, I was really in my mind thinking, wow, that, you know, that wasn't so bad. Um, we didn't have phone access. We didn't have electricity or anything. Didn't really leave to go find out. So of course we're thinking everything's cool. And then two days later, when we started getting access to the outside world, um, and we realized how many friends lost their homes and the right. destruction on Fort Myers Beach, Sanibel Island, um, and like Matt Lachey area. Um, yeah, I cried. I, I cried when I seen the picture of the Fort Myers Beach Pier gone. Right, right. Like that's, that's what hit me the worst. Um, it still gets me a little emotional um <laughs> you know so yeah that that was horrifying um but every time i go back down there i mean i am so impressed with my friends that are opening their businesses they're um getting food trucks out they're so resilient and and so diligent in this rebuild um and I, I, I watched the stupid Jersey shore, right. And the situation always <laughs> says, uh, the, the comeback is always the, the, the comeback is always better or greater than the setback. And 
that is a true testament to Fort Myers Beach um, and Santa Bell and them because it, it was horrifying seeing it, um, you know, just a few days after the hurricane. Um, luckily, I still had some old checks. I was able to get through the checkpoint. Um, and I seen our old place. And of course, you know, you, you cry because even though I didn't live there, it's still a loss. Yes. Um, and we lost friends, um, you know, that died. Um, we, I knew personally five people that, that actually passed. Um, I had two people that almost died. And of course our neighbor's dog died, you know, so it, it does touch home and it does make you think about where your life is. Um, but there's so much good that's gonna be in the future, I think, as as everybody's outlook now. Right. Yeah. I mean, uh, your video the other day uh, of you driving uh, through a lot of the rebuild and how, you know, you talked about how proud you are that they're that they're actually coming back. And, it, you know, they uh, you've seen it with uh, New Orleans, you know, with the devastation of um, I'm sorry, there's so many freaking hurricanes that have come through and it's hard to keep them all track. I can't remember which one actually destroyed New Orleans, Katrina. but which uh, yeah, that's right. Katrina. Um just amazing of uh, everything that went bad and how how they are coming back from all that and and how we are resilient we are really resilient with this it's amazing um yeah. but yeah i totally get going back and seeing your old your old home not there and and completely devastated and i can imagine that was an extremely emotional time because you did spend time there that was your home at one point and pretty yeah. insane I think the thing, you know, like you bring up Katrina and I remember watching that on TV and you, you remember how like they board stuff up and, you know, you, Katrina go away. And right. Right. Um, I didn't see that so much at this time because I didn't go out, but um, with Irma, we were the only people on the road and, and we're driving and we're seeing these boarded up. And I'm like, this is so surreal. I remember watching this on TV and then to actually be in it. Um, and then, you know, afterwards, you're just excited that, you know, you can get out of the building and all that stuff. And then there was such relief when I saw my home because, I mean, my neighbor and I, we stood there and we were saying goodbye to our, our homes, right. you know, at that time. And then for Ian, it was such a mix of emotions when I went back down to the neighborhood because you remember how you felt with Irma and remember going through the emotions of saying goodbye being the relief that it's still standing. And then all of a sudden it's just gone. Right. Um, I think it, to see it, it's just, you know, to, to see the stages. So like I, I had pictures of our stages of our home and now it's just, it's just a, a lot. Right. <laughs> so, right. you know, it, it, it's, it's easier to see it now. Um, now that the destruction in, in our neighborhood is gone, they have re actually removed the piles. Um, it makes it easier. The homeless people that got to me the next phase, cause I went down and helped our friends, uh, get place. You only have a certain amount of window that black mold grows so quickly. Yep. Um, and I got scared. I didn't want to be breathing that in. Right. Um, but then now you're going and you're seeing all these tents and people that are homeless. And, and I'm not, I don't have enough money to, to help everybody. Right. Um, that was, that's hard to watch. And some people are still homeless, you know? So um, they, and a lot of people, a lot of people that I've talked to say, well, why don't they just, you know, go somewhere, get off the Island. They lost their cars. They were underwater. They right. literally don't have transportation or a home and, and probably no money. <laughs> right. Right. Well, pay, so. Yeah. So and they're waiting on, they're waiting for, or the insurance thing did not pan out. And, and yeah, you see a lot of that where it just, I mean, yeah, it's insane. I, yeah, it's I don't tough. think, I don't think that people take that into consideration. Um, I'll, I'll, be straight up that's not i never really really thought about you know you watch yeah. it on tv you bring up the weather channel you see them stand out on the side of the of the pier or the of the beach and 
you know, talking about the wins and the, and the surges and all that. And then when it's over, you know, it's over you, uh, all of us far, far away. Don't think anything more of it. We do see some, for us is a little bit different uh, with Bobby's sister being in Texas and being a part of uh, a couple of the hurricanes that blew through there yeah. and the, and the problems with the black mold and, you know, happened immediately going in and cutting out and trying to dry out the bottom of the walls of the house so that it doesn't happen. And, you know, we see a little bit of that aftermath. We knew from them what they were going through and, you know, us being so far away, we couldn't do anything to help. You know, we'd have to take off weeks of work yeah. just to go down there and help not being able to do that. But I don't think 98% of America realizes exactly what you just said. People are living in tents because they have nothing because it all got blown away. Yeah. And they can't afford to rebuild. I mean, the, the, the whole point of the rebuild um, some places are grandfathered in if they were the FEMA 50% rule, um, which, you know, some of these places weren't, um, they're just gone. And then the building codes to rebuild astronomical, uh, right. they can't afford it. I mean, that was the whole, that's what made Fort Myers beach kind of special. Um, you know, there was the old cottages, I mean, it'd be kind of like, you know, Tippy Lake and some of those Culver Lake, some of those old cottages just being wiped out. That right. history is now gone, but that was affordable living for somebody like me. Right. Right. You know, we can't, we can't build a $2 million house. So I think that's, that's the difficult thing for a lot of those people. And, and I'm guilty of it too. I mean, how many hurricanes have come into the Gulf or gone up the Atlantic it's like, okay, there was a hurricane and I, my life goes on. Right. So, I mean, I'm guilty yeah. of it too. So, and that's a lot of the reason why I just, I'm not that person that's going, I'm not going to live in the past. I'm not going to hold anybody to remember Fort Myers Beach, remember us, but I try to post about it because it's just, it's great watching it rebuild itself. Right. And yeah. I like to share that with everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm glad you do because I love it. I, I like I said, I, I've been watching, uh, I've been watching your Facebook page now for a while, and and just kind of just being like, man, she's living her best life down there, you know, living in the, you know, in in Fort Myers and and doing what she. You just look like you love doing what you're doing. Uh, I do, you know. and actually, right before we did are doing this, I actually just got a. Uh, an email from a realtor with my accepted offer. So, All so right. yeah, life's good. And it was on Fort Myers <laughs> beach. So, you know, I, I getting somebody, uh, a happy buyer out on the beach. So perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So, so now that, uh, you know, the cleanup has started, how does that affect, uh, the, the real estate area now do, do, um, the people in, the, oh, this is going to sound harsh, but the people who were able to get it cleaned up, are they selling lots or are they, are they all straight up rebuilding or, and how does that affect what you do? Are you able to sell property, you know, blank lots like that? Is that something that you guys fall into? So Fort Myers beach is right now in its own unique market. Um, there's not a lot of inventory. I think, um, I came up with about 78 condos that are available and I would suspect about 30 of them are probably damaged by hurricane and the others are not. Um, a lot of them, if they don't have the fire pump replaced means they didn't get a certificate of occupancy. So the county's not allowing anybody to occupy the condo unit and you can't get financing for that because it's not insurable so it's wow. like a trickle effect so you got to have a lot of cash buyers right right um and there's a lot of risk for for um the cash buyers but you have to kind of look at it as you can still do your inspections um you're just not able to finance where the average person that's trying to get on the beach doesn't have that kind of cash just sitting around they need to finance so that's the struggle right now the people you know it's i kind of feel like we're back 
you know, in 2022, when all the cash buyers that had the cash could buy the stuff up, that's kind of a little bit of what we're seeing. Um, I think the market is uncertain at this point right now. So there's no good comps. So knowing where your price points should be are a challenge, you know. Um, so we're kind of in a weird place, but I think we're figuring it out. Um, the value is always going to be with the buyer when you're selling, obviously, whatever they're willing to pay. Right. And yeah. that's the challenge right now. Um, and then getting the, the proper inventory. Um, with Margaritaville coming, it's, um, I, I think it was on my video. Um, it is substantially large. It is going to bring people in. So it, the market could really go a couple different ways. Either people are going to hold on and sell once the Margaritaville is open and it's bringing people in, get a higher value, or they're going to keep it and they're going to the rent it out and things like that, you know, that's still going to be a market for those people. So the assessments, you know, I'm not going to lie. They're out there. Um, there's large assessments with some of these condo places. Um, 10,000, 15,000, um, to cover the, what the, the, I guess the insurance deductible. Okay. Um, and then there could be more assessments. So, there's a lot of uncertainty, but I think it's going to be great in the long run. And I think if if people can't afford to be on the beach or get on the beach, this is a good opportunity for that. Right on. Because I think at some point it's, it's going to be too late because it's going to be past what is affordable. Right, right. Yes, what's well, affordable? That's uh, that's my use and my problem. What's affordable and <laughs> beach property <laughs> is not on my affordable list. <laughs> nope, <laughs> that is up to the holder, right? <laughs> that is right. That is right. Uh, did you say that you had a ranch in New Mexico? Well, we did, um, and then we ended up selling it. Okay. Once we moved, we um, you know, having three or four homes was well, very challenging for us. So we had a ranch in New Mexico and we had our place in Indiana and then we had a vacation home down or we had our vacation home down here. So once we moved, um, we had sold off Indiana. Right. And we decided like we'd go to New Mexico once a year and we were going for one or two months um, out of out of the year. But my job is internet based and we could not get internet there. Well, so, yeah, <laughs> all right, ladies like, and gentlemen, New Mexico has no internet. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the best spot, though. I'm telling you what. But we just we we were the only ones that couldn't get internet and they would not put a line out on our property. So oh, I was yeah, like, you know, I can't I could never go. So right. my husband's going without me on a vacation for a month, month and a half. That's not fair. <laughs> it doesn't sound fair at all. No. Uh, well, well, damn. Well, that's cool though. What is, what kind of rant was it like? Uh, what kind of ranch was it? Just uh... we had, um. So it it was pretty much just wooded. Um, it, we were on a side of the mountain up to the top, and it went down to the valley, which was protected. Um, but the elk were amazing we would go down there i i saw what's that um what's that show the history show or the animal show oh i can't think what it's called i got to see it all in action i didn't get to watch this <laughs> stuff on tv i saw it in, i saw them fighting i saw them mating you know it was awesome was that was that um, wild is that wild kingdom you're talking you're thinking about the old it might be. mutual <laughs> <Yeah>. omaha <laughs> <laughs> that's it ladies and gentlemen be. that is not dating us whatsoever we are still in our 20s that's right we're uh yeah you know, we just graduated high school no matter what my nephew says that little bastard <laughs> uh, uh, yeah though that's pretty awesome it sounds like it was beautiful country out there oh my gosh it, it really it it was and um we always called it like high class camping at that point, you right. know, because I mean, we had electric and and stuff, but um, uh, we didn't have a bathroom. 
Oh, we really? Had to make our own bathroom. <laughs> Ooh, out to the outhouse it was. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yep. So, uh, but you know what? I was happy to have, you know, a shower and I was happy to have electric. So if, right I, on. if, if I had to go to the bathroom outside, I was okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just nature's way. It's just, just it's nature, okay. Yeah. It's all good. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay, so as I was trolling your Facebook page, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> there was a picture of you uh, oh, uh, hugging a girl who was wearing a Patrick Mahomes jersey. And oh. as I looked a little bit more, you did post a post that said, Go Chiefs. Are you a Kansas City Chiefs fan or are you just kind of uh, doing what your, what your friend was? Uh, she looked like she was a pretty big fan. Yes. Yeah, so that was probably, that might've been Brandy. Um, they actually came down to Fort Myers beach and was my neighbor's daughter and friend. And we went to the Super Bowl. Um, not this last one, but the time before and the 2009 and about the chiefs. Okay. 19. The 2019-2020 season, so it would have been February of 2020, because you know the old yes. joke. You know the joke, right? The, oh. the Chiefs win the Super Bowl and the world shuts down, because <laughs> it was just a month later that the pandemic hit, quote unquote. That hit. is true. <laughs> well, they were the ones, they were like, you got to beat Chiefs, and you know, so, I mean, they were diehard, and um so I went to the Super Bowl, no big deal. And we took oh, that yeah, picture fuck, and I was fuck, it's no big deal. I went to the yeah. Super Bowl. I watched well, Patrick Mahomes I win. <laughs> I know. Oh my gosh. I had so much fun. They made me a Chiefs fan because the Super Bowl and watching them cheer on and be such diehards, I I guess I got the itch. So yeah. So this time I was like, I'm I'm going for the Chiefs, man. They're winning. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not really a die hard fan, but they got me stoked about it. And now I will be a forever Chiefs fan. That is amazing. That's what uh, that's what we hope for. Uh, of course, Bobby drug drug me into watching football in the early 90s when Joe Montana went um, oh, yeah. uh, to Kansas City. And we've been Chiefs fans ever since. So okay. we went through 30 years of just horrible, horrible, you know, teams and, and all that. So yeah, we were yeah. I mean, I, I I'm not gonna lie, Julie. I cried when they won the Super Bowl. You know, in 2020. Hey, it's all right. I can tell you're a diehard because I can see the stuff in the background. <laughs> <laughs> that I've got a few things here. Uh, you know that. Uh, well, we actually do a podcast called Indiana Chiefs Fans. Uh, me and my son Gunner and our friend Phil. Um, of course, we're all season ticket holders. So we okay. go to as many games as we can. I mean, that's a lot of travel. It's a lot of time off work to, to get there and get back. But so we use, I think I was, I think I went to four last year. Um, uh, Phil actually goes to more. He he's like you, he can work from home with his job. So he can actually do his job from an Airbnb in Kansas city or his, you know, his, his place in Portage, you know, his home in Portage. So it, that's good for him. It doesn't work for me. I can't figure out how to internet a driving a van to go pick up shit. So <laughs> if I figure it out, I'm going to, I'm going to make a mint, but um, so yeah, we do this podcast called Indiana Chiefs fans. We're actually getting ready to wrap it up for the season uh, next week, but uh, yeah, you can tell this is, this is my setup for the Indiana Chiefs fan podcast with my yeah. championship flags and my guitars and, my autographed helmets and the shit that I spend way too much money on, you know, uh, you know, hey. Kansas, Kansas city has all my money. Exactly. Hey, you know what? <laughs> You're 50 now, you know, <laughs> you've earned it. You've I, earned I, that know. Right. I know. Right. I, it's terrible. It's terrible, but damn it. Um, we figured it out. Right. That's all right. That's uh, we talked about empty nesters earlier and I've never been, I, I'm, I'm super happy to be an empty nester. The kids are out doing, they're doing great on their own. Uh, I'm happy for them, and it's just nice to not have to to worry about all the rigmarole of running around or worrying where everybody's at or any of that stuff. Amen. But yeah, I love it. So I don't. I mean, and I I mean this is no dis disrespect at all, but 
I looked so forward to Empty Nester. Um, I couldn't wait. And it's like, <laughs> it's yeah i love that freedom <laughs> yeah no it's it's pretty great it's like you know what yeah. you want to what you want to just go away for the weekend okay sure. not to yeah. worry about nothing <laughs> else boom yeah i yeah. love it uh i did notice that uh you have tons of tattoos uh oh. i can see the one on your shoulder but i was looking at one of your armbands from one of the pictures earlier uh oh, yeah i've yeah i've got a few yeah, that was the one right there that I was looking at in one of the pictures. Um, I love it. Uh, anything special that you have tattooed that uh, that you'd like to share? Um, I know it's a yeah, weird, it's a weird really any... fucking question, and it's like, why does he ask? I don't know. It's just one of those things. <laughs> it's interesting. Well, this one is has both my kids on it. Right on. And um, and my son who is incarcerated, he's the one that drew this one. So oh, I went awesome. and got it tattooed um my other ones are just you know they're just pretty simple right on. um i just got this one done um i'm getting ready to do my grandkids on my leg um yeah i don't even know how many one two three i think i got eight all together i say i say the one on your the arm with your boys names on it was the one that i saw and then yeah, yeah. when when we're talking i could see the one underneath your yeah, right there on your collar and on your arm oh yeah so, yeah <laughs> and i got this 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 one is my dog oh that Randy. no that's awesome that's awesome yeah. And that's right where her paw landed. And I decided like I was going to get it tattooed before she's no longer with us. So right. I, I got that tattooed. So, yeah, that's awesome. I, I, you know, everybody kept telling me they're like, I said, three, three max, three max. And everybody kept saying, you're going to get addicted. And I'm like, nah, well, yeah, yeah I'm addicted. No, it's a dick. <laughs> it, it is a bad, bad addiction. I, yeah, I don't have yes. a ton of self, but I have a few and, and, uh, yeah, they're, uh, they're, they're yeah that's an addiction my my daughter that's uh when she turned 18 that's the first thing she ran out and did was got a tattoo and i told okay. her i said you know pump the brakes because it was like tattoo and then a month or so later another tattoo and it's like hey, hold up you know make sure that these are what you want to live with for forever um and right. then she learned how to tattoo so she tattoos oh. herself <laughs> <laughs> uh she's also okay. there, she's done she's done that one for me that one says golden mojo music on it you know live the brand right it. there and then yeah. uh, we have have a couple more that she did on my wrist or whatever okay. but i love it the fact that i'm like hey i want a new tattoo and then it's like okay yeah. well you're gonna buy me needles that i will buy you needles you know just tell me what i need to worry <laughs> there you go there you go so it works oh out goodness. for me <laughs> yeah yeah All right. i love them you know and um the armband it you know that red and that green that mm -hmm. hurts mm -hmm. i mean it did hurt normally they don't bother me at all but that one kind of set me back a little bit and then this right one on the, yeah right on that collarbone like right here but yeah it felt like he was right up here on my neck <laughs> yeah. and that's how much it, it hurt but for the most part none of them hurt too bad no no they're not horrible you just kind of you kind of gotta uh what is it you know go into the skid you know turn into the skid you do yeah and just go with it and and enjoy it and um it's always funny at this age when uh people talk about getting oh we're gonna get my first tattoo and then you just start fucking with them you're like oh I hey, know. you know what we're you know you had it's gonna be like thousands of needles jamming into you all at one time and you're like what i don't like needles i said no you don't <laughs> <laughs> but as long as you lean into it and just sit back and enjoy it it's always a great experience and it's something you can yeah. take with you forever and and uh, i love tattoos i love i always have a problem i get to looking at people and that's i focus on them and i just you know because they mean something to some you know to that person and and I think, uh, you know, they're all pretty amazing. So I do. I think so too. I'm always looking at everybody's tattoos. Yeah. So would you like to, I, I know we don't have hundreds of millions of listeners. We're actually still pretty of a small, uh, a podcasting group, but would you like to plug, uh, your, uh, real estate, uh, real estate, uh, the latitude group? Would you like to plug and, and talk, uh, just give your email address and all that stuff? Sure. I can do that. So 
Julie Morgan with Latitude Group, and my my email address is julie.morgan at latituderegroup.com, and my uh, Florida phone number is 239-276-4647. So all of our friends out there looking for something in Fort Myers or in that area, uh, Cape, uh, Cape Coral, I, I have those written down, so I... <laughs> <laughs> in, in that area you want to get down there you want some uh you want some beach time or just some of that florida sun this is the girl you want to call and talk to and she will get you hooked up either with herself or with her team and they will find you what you are looking for i guarantee it yes <laughs> amen oh Julie, thank you so much for taking the time and just spending this hour with me and uh, and just talking and having a, having a good time. It is so good to see you. It has been absolutely way too long since uh, we've actually even just talked. I mean, yeah, I can't even tell. I, honestly, I could not tell you the last time I, I have actually talked to you or seen you. You know, I don't know either. But the funny thing is, my brother and I, we were just talking. We're like, remember the car wash? <laughs> and we always met up every morning at the car wash. Every morning at the car wash. <laughs> that was like, you know, that was that was the greatest thing ever. And then you guys all graduated, and then it was just me and little Sam, just the two of us sitting at the car wash. We're like, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. That, it, I mean, school was not fun at all but no. that first part of the day that is what really got a lot of us through the day it did it was so awesome yeah we we always look forward to it every morning going down there and meeting up with everybody and hanging out and yeah, yeah i don't know that they have that as much anymore and i think with social media and everything else they don't have that group interaction of uh you know the car wash which is now a bunch yeah. of storage units the car wash is gone i know <laughs> what in the world it's sad really it's it's so it so sad, sad. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> well i appreciate you inviting me on it's been really great seeing you you too and thank you once again I so so much appreciate it let me do my out um, out plugs here and then uh, we will call it a night all right all right sounds great all right. Thank you, everybody, for listening to uh, Golden Image Podcast. And thank you, everybody, for taking the time to meet Julie and and get to know her a little bit. Uh, listen, man, we do this every week. Uh, we we do on a normal rotation. Uh, you know, me, the Skywalker and Chico Noise all go to places that uh, we hope that you'll want to go to, too. So whether we're going to a brewery or restaurant or or any of that stuff. But if there's any place you'd like us to go check out, give us a shout out, goldenmojoent at gmail.com. We'll be happy to get back to you. And don't forget about all the rest of the Golden Mojo Entertainment Podcast under the umbrella of the empire. That's right. They call me the emperor because I run the empire. Uh, on Mondays, we have the call guys with Chico and uh, Vanilla Thunder. They talk all pop culture, movies, TV shows. They, they'll they run you through why DC sucks. You know, that's just the way they are. On Tuesdays, obviously, Gold News Podcast. On Wednesdays, it is the United States of Paranormal with Team Tejas and Team Boozers taking you on some of the creepiest adventures that we can find for you. Uh, Thursdays is Indiana Chiefs fans. They're probably on break right now since I'm recording this a little bit earlier than in the in the year, but um, since probably this is going to be about mid April when this comes out. So, uh, as we, as we, uh, get into the spring and summer months, uh, any on cheese fans is going to be, uh, done for season one, getting ready to come back for season two. Uh, also on Fridays, we have the Murd nerds. That's right. Uh, Ashley and Alicia talk all true crime all the time. You never know what they're going to be up to in the month of April. And a court of books and booze. And it's right. That is your basement book club with the Skywalker, Jessica and Amanda, where I'm not sure at this point where they're at in the game of uh, the throne of glass series, but uh, they've been talking about the throne of glass by Sarah J. Moss. They got me hooked on these fucking books. Let me tell you, I've been audible and I'm like crazy trying to keep up with their podcast. So 
That is the Empire, ladies and gentlemen. If you're interested in some of those things, please go check them out. They are on all of your favorite streaming networks. And if you have any questions about them, feel free to give me a get a hold of me. Golden Mojo ENT at gmail.com. Julie, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Did you get all that? That was a lot of information shooting up. That was a lot. <laughs> It's a, that's, that's what we do every podcast. We make sure that everybody knows everything. That's uh, we got to let them know. Super so cool. yeah, tell all your friends about the empire golden mojo entertainment. <laughs> will do. I all will. Right. Thank you, Julie. Until next time. All right. Thank you. Later. Bye. Golden image. Oh, I finally got a crap this game. Rock on. Oh! Wow. Don't know that.